After letting the body dry for a couple of days, I could move on to painting some of those window moldings. Now I'm going to just paint them in one uniform color of flat black. Now I know that these are not supposed to be one color all the way. Some of the pillars have to be in the body color and then the inside has to be that rubber molding. But I simply don't like that look. So I decided to do it my own way and just paint it all flat black in an even color all around. So after putting the tape on, going over all those panel lines, then I could carefully cut it out with a sharp knife, scuff it up a tiny amount with some sanding sponges from Tamiya, and then moved on to applying some Zero Paints Flat Black. So as mentioned before, I'm scuffing these up a tiny bit for the paint later on, the flat black in this case, to stick to it a lot better. The surface was really shiny and therefore also slippery. And that's not really a good piece for paint to stick to. So by scuffing them up, I remove any of the imperfections that might have been in them and also give it something to bite onto for the flat black paint. And while I had it masked off anyway, I also decided to paint the inside of the roof in the same flat black to make it easier and not have to do it with a brush afterwards. While I was masking and painting on the body anyway, I also decided to go for the grill. I masked it off on the surrounding areas, then cut carefully around the grill itself and took out some Zero Paints Chrome. Now I'm obviously not using the standard body from this kit, I'm using the replacement body and that is a touring version from scale production and therefore the window glass does not really fit either. So in order to change that I needed to remove the back half, so I masked it off where I needed to cut it, then scribed a first line with a super sharp knife, then engraved it a bit deeper with a panel line scriber and did the final cut with a saw blade. Afterwards I cleaned it up with a sanding twig and then I could just glue it in place. The only downside to this kit I have found so far was that there was no rear glass included in it. The side glass that needed to be modified to the touring version is in the kit, but the rear glass isn't, so I needed to make that myself. I firstly placed some masking tape on it, then traced it with a permanent marker, cut some material from a package for electronics, or in this case inked cartridges for a printer, transferred that tape to the printer cartridge package, and then just carefully cut around it roughly to remove the bulk of the material, and then used a ruler and a sharp knife to cut it in the super fine detail in order to make it fit to that rear hatch. It fit in perfectly well, so I just sanded the edges to clean it up a tiny bit, then marked it with a permanent black marker to give it a black surrounding, and then just used some Bob Smith Industries Super Gold Plus to glue it all in place.
The replacement glass for the side was included in the kit. This was some vacuum formed plastic which just needed to be cut to shape and then could be glued in as well. While I was busy with the clear parts anyway I moved on to the head and tail light lenses. I added some orange and some red and then also the black border around it to simulate that rubber. The head and tail light buckets themselves were painted with a nice bright silver to give it a good reflective surface and make the lights look a bit more realistic and have a super nice and bright background. The front grille inserts were painted with some flat black to make it a nice accenting piece and not have it look like all one big bulky silver piece. And I did the same to those lower grills. For those wondering why I did not remove the grills, well, the mounting tabs for the chassis were behind them, or at least on the left and right side, so I really couldn't cut them out as I still needed those pieces to mount the chassis, and there is simply no detail whatsoever behind it, so I just figured I'd left it like that. I also painted some of the window glass on the inside to make it look a bit better and not see all the glue spots, and then moved on to priming a couple of pieces for the chassis. After letting the primer dry, I cleaned out the airbrush a little bit, moved on to some silver paint and painted a couple of parts in silver as well. With the silver now applied and dry, I moved on to painting the centers of the wheels in a nice gold color. In order to detail the wheels out a bit more with just the gold, I decided to paint all the nuts and bolts in some silver, just using a nice toothpick and some Vallejo paints. The photo etch pieces for the disc brakes were stuck to a piece of masking tape and then scuffed up with some sandpaper to make them look a bit more realistic. Afterwards they were glued in place and that's it for this video.